Uh, my name is Dr. Robert Graham. I am a board certified internal and integrative medicine doctor. I obtained my training in integrative medicine at Harvard Medical School while I obtained my master's in public health at the Harvard School of Public Health. I am the co-founder and CEO of FreshMed, an integrative health practice here in downtown Brooklyn. FreshMed is a unique practice simply because it really is a collaborative team-based approach. We have one goal, one goal only, is to get you happier and healthier. As Dr. Weil mentioned, we cherry, picks, we cherry pick the best of both conventional and complementary therapies where there is an evidence base for its utility. What I mean by that is, for example, we don't necessarily just give you a pill for an ill. We try to understand the root cause of your diseases. So we don't rush you. We have this idea that health does take time, and so therefore we give you the opportunity to share your story with us. I think what really makes us unique is that we have a really a food-first approach. Um, in our model, the whole FRESH model, it really looks at the five pillars of well-being. Food, relaxation, exercise, sleep, and happiness. And we have found out if we first address those five pillars, medicine is of less need or of no need. So I firmly believe that food is medicine uh, based upon two things. Number one, just growing up in a very multi-ethnic, multicultural society where if you really understand traditional medical belief systems, food is medicine simply because they didn't have pills. So they really knew how to identify the foods that really fuel you or feed you from both a nutrition, physiologic, and spiritual way. And I think because of our quick pill for an ill, we've actually stepped away from that. There's a direct lineage between, direct link between bad food and bad health. Let's take, for example, diabetes, cancer, heart disease. They are all related to how and what we eat. So therefore, if we actually flip that model and actually introduce healthy foods and healthy ways of eating, maybe we can actually reverse and prevent some of these chronic diseases that really are affecting 80% of our healthcare dollars. Food is medicine and medicine is food. So one of my proudest moments so far in my medical history is really developing the first urban rooftop edible farm on a hospital. Now, I don't know where your listeners or your viewers are watching us from, but here in America, our food uh, system in hospitals is terrible. Um, and it's always kind of just perplexed me why if you actually are trying to change disease, why are you feeding them the exact foods that are actually causing the disease that they're in the hospital for? So if you can't trust it, grow your own food. And that was the kind of the idea I had. So why don't we grow up on a rooftop since there's no space in New York City and start growing food that we actually can make a difference in patients' lives. And that's what we did. We actually grew food, vegetables and herbs and actually put it into both the patient and employees' meals so they actually can be eating the fruits of our labor. Introducing healthy behaviors, which starts with food, in hospitals is the future. And actually since our development, we actually are seeing Roughly five, I think five hospitals now have some sort of urban garden. My goal, as I said in my TED talk, is that someday I think as a healthcare system, they should invest in actually farms that I, we can actually prescribe food as medicine to the patients while in the hospitals and give them the actual food that they're growing on their farm and really kind of close the loop on what brought them in there in the beginning. So there's a funny saying about the only Two, there's only two things wrong with healthcare today. Um, how it's financed and how it's delivered. And I think you can't talk about healthcare reform without touching on those two points. There are huge issues, right? How, how healthcare is financed is a big, big issue. How it's delivered, I think, can be changed. If we actually start focusing on things that patients can control, patients can control, at least most patients control, can control what they put in their mouth. Think about that. 21 times a week, you actually have the ability to control what you're putting in your mouth. And I think we have to go back and strip it back to our roots, eat real foods, things that your mom understood. The biggest barrier is that, number one, as physicians, we're not taught about nutrition in medical school. So therefore, we do what we're taught. So that if we have a disease-based model, we focus on diseases as our major outcome of interest in terms of reversing it or preventing it. Prevention is another big issue because we're not really taught prevention in medical schools. We're taught this idea of pathogenesis. Pathogenesis is the birth of diseases. 
So that's where we're really good at diagnosing something and then coming up with a treatment plan. We don't have a good educational background in terms of trying to understand salutogenesis. Salutogenesis, if you break that word up, is the birth of health. So as a physician, I came into medicine to make people healthier. So now why not change the medical paradigm to introduce more things that can actually help patients feel healthier or be healthier instead of managing diseases where what we are taught in medical school. So it's an education, financial, and delivery model that has to change. But if you really think about it, in the US, insurance is tied to your job, right? So we have had a couple of insurance companies reach out to us to try to understand our model of preventing diseases and illnesses or managing them better or reversing them. But what we really have seen is that companies have come to us to oversee their health and wellness. Why? Because again, if insurance is tied to your company, the CEO of a company wants to shave their healthcare dollars. The only way to shave their healthcare dollars down is by preventing diseases. It's a lot easier to prevent something than to manage it. So unfortunately, insurances are not in the business of prevention so much, unfortunately. What we're seeing is that because of the financial model of healthcare dollars expenditures from companies going up and up and up, CEOs and companies are reaching out to HR departments, are reaching out to us to develop more corporate wellness programs. So therefore, they actually have a culture of health and wellness and not of, of managing this disease model that they are seeing the burden from it from a financial point of view. And one of the things I realized through my 15 years of being a doc here is that you are your best doctor. Self-care is the best form of health care. A doctor only comes in when you need us. And I, the analogy I give is that there's a Himalayan mountain. We are the Sherpa. But the only way you're going to get up that mountain is by you taking one step at a time. And we try to break it, at, break it down into very simple, easy to understand approach to well-being. And if we look at your food, how and what you're eating, how are you finding time to relax? Are you relaxing? Do you know you have a relaxation response? Are you moving? Are you getting enough exercises? Are you breaking a sweat? How are you sleeping? We find that sleep is a medical necessity, and many of our patients are not getting that restful sleep or enough sleep. It's not so much the quantity, it's the quality of sleep. And I think the last thing is happiness. We all should want to live to get up the next day to do something purposeful. Find meaning, find happiness in your life. And that's really through the lens of positive psychology. Trying to understand why people flourish, why people want to be north of neutral. Just being okay is not good enough. And I think using that kind of model, a fresh model, we can actually address those five pillars of well-being. And if needed, we can actually give medications, prescribe antibiotics, prescribe x-rays, do certain other technologies to, be to, get a, to get a better sense of your health and well-being. The whole idea is that you come to me as a doctor. I can't do it all. I'm not trained to do it all. I don't have the time to do it all, and I have, don't have the expertise. So I work really closely with clinical nutritionists and a health coach. We've come to find out that many people need dietary help or nutritional help. But I find that a lot of people understand what not to do, so then why do they do it? And that's where changing the mindset through positive psychology and health coaching really have a role. Now, some people have musculoskeletal issues and other things that need more of a team-based approach, which I think is the highlight of what we do here at FreshMed in physiologic. Physiologic is a really interesting um, model as well because we collaborate very closely day-to-day -day with acupuncturists, chiropractors, massage therapists, physical therapists, um, nutritionists, yoga teachers, Pilates teachers, just about every type of modality out there, complementary therapy, to help you get healthier. So what's really cool about our practice here is that on Tuesdays we all meet for a team meeting. So if we have a challenging case, maybe the acupuncturist can put their two cents into that clinical case. If I come into a challenging dilemma with one of my patients, I may tap our nutritionist to help me out with it. If it really is a, more, uh, a behavior change that we're looking for, that is when our health coach comes into play. So whenever we get stuck with a challenging case, we actually ask for help. And what's great about this place is that literally down the hall we have chiropractors, we have massage therapists and nutritionists. So if any of us get stuck or need help, or what we call um, in medicine, we offer a curbside counsel. 
or consulting. So that in our hallway, we can actually stop and say, hey, by the way, can you help us out with this case? And we probably do it every single day. So there's different forms of diagnosing. And I think we're seeing an explosion of patients being their best healthcare advocate. One of the things I see all the time is that they're not getting the results from their conventional medical doctor and or approach. They want to take more of an active role in their lifestyle and have this idea that their lifestyle has a direct impact into their health trajectory. Unfortunately, integrative medicine, functional medicine, lifestyle medicine is an evolving branch of conventional medicine. Because remember, we don't use alternative medicine. So it has to be somewhat safe. It has to be safe, effective, and have an evidence base. With that being said, I think that's what patients are looking for. You are your best doctor, and therefore you should look into and ask. If you're not in New York City or Brooklyn, New York, um, there are certain terms that I recommend patients looking for. Number one, not everyone, just because they have had some training, is an expert. Um, but look for terms like integrative medicine, board certification in integrative medicine, American Board of Holistic Medicine, the American Board of Integrative Medicine, Inst Institute for Functional Medicine. Um, there are tons of health coaches out there that have training in nutrition. Now, I use health coaches all the time, and we actually have one here, uh, my wife. But again, it's always a team approach. We can only get so far alone. We are currently in a healthcare crisis, right? Our patients are fatter and sicker. Our doctors are not being cared for. Uh, there is a huge rate of physician and actually healthcare burnout that's happening. And in fact, 400 doctors die each year from suicide. And it's not because of calling, I think, not altruism. It's how we are forced to do medicine today. If faster medicine equals worse healthcare. Uh, there is talk about a value-based system where we're actually looking as the value of healthcare as an important outcome. But unfortunately, the delivery model doesn't support that. So until we change from a volume-based to a value-based healthcare system, we're never going to change what we're doing right now. Number two, I think society is becoming more uh, knowledgeable uh, of the burden of preventable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and certain, to a certain extent cancer, the role that you have in how you eat, how you sleep, how you relax, exercise, and how you find happiness, how you distress. So I think in the next 20 years, what's gonna happen is this. Number one, the sicker are gonna get sicker, unless something changes radically in the delivery model. Number two, I think a lot of millennials are understanding the important role of food as medicine, which I think is the most important factor to consider. Many others are actually adopting more of a health healthy lifestyle. Yoga classes are exploding. Meditation centers are now happening. The fields of positive psychology are driving in. The importance of sleep is really happening in Fortune 500 companies with sleep rooms now. So there is a tension to healthy lifestyles. But again, I don't think insurance is going to cover it. I think it has to happen from the business sectors. We have to change our medical curriculum to start, start teaching our doctors and healthcare professionals about the important role that food has in both disease management, disease prevention, and disease reversal. And I think without at that education, so much so that I'm actually becoming a chef this year, really kind of to, to complete that circle, that I feel that by changing how we eat, we can actually change how we live.